My name is Leah Bamonte and I've been to every single country in the world. I've been to every US state, every US national park, both the North and South Poles, and almost every major stadium in the world. inspiration to travel in the beginning was that one of my best friends was going to study abroad in London. I had never been out of the country and it just seemed like a fun thing to do and you didn't have to be 21 to drink in London. I didn't decide to go to every country until about 2007 or so after I had already been to about 100 countries. My original goal was to go to 100 countries by the time I was 30 and I hit that back in 2006 and then I just kept going from there. Lee and I go way back to 2015 when we met at the Open Golf Championship in Scotland. I reached out to him that day because I'd been following his journey to every country which I aspired to do and we hit it off right away. Over the years, Lee has become a great friend and mentor, giving me tons of advice for both business and travel. We've been to five countries together, the UK, USA, Laos, Thailand, and now we're currently traveling around Ethiopia. That's nice church. You mean? Gander. <laughs> Next up, Somalia. We are in Tigray, Ethiopia, in the middle of nowhere in northern Ethiopia. It kind of looks like Monument Valley slash Moab. On August 28th, 2011, Lee became the youngest American at the time to visit all 193 UN member states. He finished in Libya at 32 years old, but his strategy of visiting every country was not at all the same way that me or my friends are doing it in today's world. When I started traveling in 1998, the internet was basically in its infancy and I didn't really know how to use it regardless. So I booked all my travel through STA Travel. The proudest moment of my travel life without question was reaching the South Pole, like the actual geographic South Pole, not just Antarctica. And then the North Pole about a year and a half after that, without question, because so few people have been to both poles, let alone every country. So that's kind of one of my claims to fame. Social media was never that popular during his travels. Sure, it was around, but the word influencer wasn't even born yet, and the value of leveraging social media is now astronomical compared to what opportunities he had before. In my case, I'm making a living off social media and I use it to get sponsors and freebies to lower my travel costs. It's also the tool for how I connect with locals in each country to show me around. But for Lee, he had to pay for all of his travels out of his own pocket from money that he had saved. So now when I see how things are going now, I'm like blown away and I wish I could have some of that money I spent back, but I wouldn't change anything. Not only did he finish the UN countries, he's visited 321 unique territories such as the Pitcairn Islands, Tokelau, Greenland, and Mayotte. So Lee Abamanti, are you the world's most traveled man? <laughs> no, I am not the world's most traveled person. However, I think that's a silly title anyway and it's completely subjective. I would definitely be amongst the top people, but it's so subjective and people can go places a million times or fly a million miles and does that make them more traveled than someone who's been to a lot of places and just put a foot in uh, over a border and then left? So I don't know how you define the most traveled people, but uh, it's a fun argument to have. How many miles do you think you've flown in your life? I've probably flown uh, six million miles, I would say. If you had to guess, how many different airlines? I have flown exactly 192 airlines. How many airports? I've been to exactly, currently, 586 airports. <laughs> you quit Gondar today? Yes, I did, yeah. Nowadays, Lee makes a living by being a travel expert on TV. He is a spokesman for several multinational corporations, does public speaking gigs around the world, is a travel writer, and just enjoys life about as much as anyone possibly can. Sometimes I can't believe how much I travel, but at the same time, I can't imagine not doing it. I'm thankful to have a friend like Lee, and I know that there will be many more trips that we take in the future. And of course, rounds of golf. Pressure of the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really big on inspirational quotes, but travel because it really changed my life. Whether you have traveled a little bit or not at all, just get out there and do it. Whether you go to an off the beaten path place like Ethiopia here, or you just go down to Florida or the Caribbean or wherever it might be, just get out there and do it because it's life changing and it just opens your eyes and your mind to different cultures and different ideas than you're used to thinking. And uh, me, I think I'm gonna head over to Mogadishu, Somalia with my boy Drew. Yeah, dude, can't wait, man. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs>
off the charts to uh, to think of, but my favorite is probably trying to enter Libya, which would have been my 193rd in last country. So it, it was a no-fly zone at the time. It took me about six months to get in, and I was finally able to get in from the eastern border, or so I was told. I flew to a place called Mursa Mutra in Egypt. I found a guy who looked like he spoke English. I offered him money to take me to the border. He said no, he's gonna do one better. His brother was coming from Tobruk, Libya, in a minivan and he was gonna transport me across the border. I'm like, yeah, okay, man, sounds great. Never met these guys in my life. Anyway, get to the border, long story short, a firefight breaks out on the other side of the border between Chinese smugglers and the Libyan rebels who controlled the border. The Chinese smugglers wanted to uh, smuggle fake cigarettes into Egypt and not pay tariffs on them. The Libyan rebels, of course, wanted them to pay, so they start shooting each other. Meanwhile, we're about 30 feet away, and the car gets hit three times with bullets. I mean, I'm like freaking out in the back of the car, so we have to wait about three hours uh, until it settles down and then eventually we get to the border again the guy turns around to me he goes give me your passport i'm like okay here it is and he goes here's the deal and i'm like what he goes you're going to be a humanitarian dentist going into libya to do dental work and i'm like i'm not a dentist he goes it doesn't matter you have straight teeth that's all that really matters and i'm like okay so we get to the border he hands him my passport says a few words in arabic to him the guy kind of leans in looks at me points to his teeth smiles and i'm like do the same thing back to him and uh, he just goes welcome to Libya and I always say I kind of like went out with a bang for my 193rd country it was pretty awesome wow man great story me and Drew are about to do an interview together and because he's a lot shorter than me he's gonna hurt him man he's moving this fucking block over <laughs> so he can be on high level with me. <laughs> can't pick it up <laughs> do what you gotta do man <laughs> Fall on behind the scenes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm too tall. Now it's gonna be weird. <laughs> now, it's, now it just looks awkward. <laughs> I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.